Hello. So today we're going to be looking at the hardest GCSE question ever, ever, ever. And it comes from the June 2019 Edexcel paper, and it was in paper two, which is a calculator paper, although calculators are not going to help us here. This is the question. Now it's a vectors question, the last question in the paper. But weirdly, pa question one, or part A, is going to lull us into a serious false sense of security. And then part B is going to absolutely blow our minds. So let's see part A. We're trying to express F E in terms of A and or B. So we're trying to find F E. Now to do that, we're going to go F C, C D, D T. We're going to use this journey because we know all these pieces. F C is A minus B, C D is just A, and D E is just B. So to do F to E, we can actually just go F C, C D, and then D E. And then when we collect like terms, we have two A's and minus B plus B cancels out. So it's just two A. So F E is actually just two A. Pretty simple for two marks, feeling pretty confident. And then we get to the absolute monster of a question. M is the midpoint of D E. X is the point on F M, so that's this point here, such that F X to xm is something to 1. So we have a ratio of fx to xm. And we get told that cxe, so let's draw that in, cxe is a straight line. This is a straight line. Work out the value of n. Okay, maybe this isn't that tricky. My initial thoughts would be, if this is the midpoint, why don't I do some redefining and actually call this b over 2? And this bit, b over 2. So dm b over 2, m e b over 2. And actually, the way we're going to answer this question, and I would suggest pausing the video, trying it for yourself. And just for record, this was four marks. So think about how much work we did for two marks in part A, and I'll think about what we might need to do for four marks in part B. So pause the video, try yourself. Now, before we go through the answers, I want to talk a bit more about this question. And I've actually talked about this on my blog on chelekmaths.com. I'll put the link below. And because this question does rely on some pretty tricky A-level knowledge, or it can rely on that. And I think the most elegant solution that we're going to talk about does rely on that. So in this blog post, I talk about the question. I talk about the very, very overcomplicated answer in the mark scheme. And then go on a journey about equating coefficients and how that could help us answer the question. And then I give some other similar but easier questions that all build up to this final question. And actually, I give a nice scaffolded way that you could answer this. So I will link this in the description. And now let's get to our question and answer. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to define, we're going to go from f to x, from here to here. We're going to find fx. And we're going to find fx in two different roots. And because of how vectors work, those two roots, or any way we get from f to x, have to be equivalent. In the same way that any way we go from f to e, whether we went from f, c, c, d to d, e, or just straight from f to e, is always going to be 2a, any way we get from f to x is going to be the same. So all we need to do is we just need to think about this in two different ways. So one way we're going to go is we're going to say that fx is fc plus cx. fc plus cx, like that. And another way we're going to think about this is the fact that fx is just some amount, we don't know how much, but it's some amount of fm. So we're going to say it's some amount, we're going to call that k, of fm. And we know it's these two things. So now let's start defining each one. Let's start with filling in some of these gaps. Now we know that fc is a minus b. We get told that in part a. Do we know cx? Well, cx is just some amount of ce, some amount of ce. So we can call it m, which is just some amount of ce. So we're going to need to find ce as well. So the vector CE, well, we can do, we can call that CD 
plus DE. So we're going from C to D and then from D to E. So that's going to be CD is A, so it's A plus B. So CE is going to be A plus B. So now we have all the pieces for our first one. FC is going to be A minus B plus some amount of A plus B. Now similarly, for our second one, so that was our first method, and our second method of going from F to X, it needs FM. So let's find FM. FM is going to be FC, CD, and then half of DE. So it's going to be, let's look at it, uh, A minus B, which is FC, plus A, and then plus B over 2, which is DM. And if I simplify this, because I've got A's and I've got B's, I can really write FM as 2A minus 0.5B, because I've got minus 1B at a half B. So now I have all the pieces. So I can really call this sum amount K of FM, which is 2A minus 0.5B. Now, what's special about this? Well, we're going to use a method called equating coefficients, because we know that fx has to be equivalent to fx. It doesn't matter which route we take, fx has to be fx, which means that a minus b plus m lots of a plus b has to be equivalent to some amount of 2a minus 0.5b. Now, how does that help us? Well, we are going to use equating coefficients. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the coefficients of A and B on both sides. So you can see why this is so complicated. And actually, this method that we're looking at here, which I think is the nicest and most useful one, does come up a lot in year 12 and 13 in A-level maths. So using this technique now does set you up for that later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this out, and I'm going to collect all the A's together and the B's together. So here I'm going to have A plus m a from this minus b plus m b from this and this is going to be equivalent to 2k lots of a minus 0.5k lots of b factorizing this i really have 1 plus m lots of a minus actually let's do plus m minus 1 lots of b and this has to be equivalent to 2ka minus 0.5kb. So recap what we've done. We've just found two different routes to get from f to x, and we are equating them together. So what we have here is that we have a certain amount of a's and a certain amount of b's. We know that the coefficients have to be the same. 1 plus m has to be the same as 2k, because our coefficients of a have to be exactly the same. So we have 1 plus m equals to 2k. Similarly, we also know that the coefficient of b, these guys also have to be exactly the same, because we need the same amount of b. So we have that m minus 1 equals to minus 0.5k. And actually, then what we have is some simultaneous equations, 1 and 2. And to solve these, well, you can use any technique we want, but we can see we have the same amount of m's. So actually, I'm going to do uh, equation 1 minus equation 2, which is going to give me 1 minus 1, which is 2, m minus m, which cancels. 2 equals 2 minus minus 0 0.5, so that's 2.5k, which means that k equals 2 over 2.5, which is, and we have a calculator here, actually, but we this is actually just 4 over 5. And now thinking back to our question, what are we trying to work out? Here, we said that fx is k lots of fm. Well, now we know that k is 4 fifths. Is that enough to answer our question? We get told that fx to fm, so fx to xm, is something to 1. 
And now we've just found out that fx is four-fifths of fm, four-fifths of the whole thing. So from f to m, where this is x, this first bit is four-fifths, which means this second bit has to be one-fifths or one fifth, which means the ratio of fx to xm is just four to one, because fx is four times bigger than fm. So actually my final answer, we didn't even need to calculate m, which was the other coefficient, was four to one. And that's actually my answer. My answer is four to one. So n was one. Now that's kind of crazy for four marks. In fact, I'd say that's super crazy for four marks, but it is lovely. And the idea of the fact that you have these vector questions, you can answer them by just finding two different routes to the same thing and then equating the coefficients of those things, I think is absolutely gorgeous. But for four marks, pretty crazy. I think the reason they only made it four marks is so that if you didn't get it, you, could, you wouldn't lose that many marks. And actually, if we go back to the blog post I wrote and we look at the mark scheme, they do a completely different method. And I'll link a video that talks through the, this method as well, although I actually think this one is equally as complicated. But also the other mark scheme for it, which is here, the alternative one, does do exactly what I did, what I did, which is find two suitable vector expressions for fx. It's just they really give you zero explanation at all of how to do it, which is why when I looked at this mark scheme, I was like, how is anyone going to learn anything from this mark scheme? And you can see you get so few marks for every step. <laughs> you, like, so few marks. For complete process to equate coefficients, which was all of this down here with simultaneous equations and everything, you only get one mark. But still, that is one of my favourite GC questions of all time, and also the trickiest. So, did you get it right? If so, how did you do it? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're interested, make sure to check out the full blog post about beta, vector and equating shenanigans, where I talk about all the parts of this question and also give you some ideas of how to practice these things so that you can answer this question yourself. Thank you very much.